Good morning and welcome to the Chapel Jonesboro Online. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here, and we want to thank you for joining live with us this morning. We know God is going to do something extraordinary in your lives and in the lives of everybody that you touch because you heard this word today. Here, do me a quick favor. Go on there, go in the bottom corner, and sh click that share button. Share this video, invite all of your friends, let's get them on the live feed, and let's get them here at the Chapel Jonesboro for church this morning, because just as much as God's going to impact your life, we need him to impact the lives of everyone around us. Everyone reach one. That's a good motto. This morning, everybody on the live feed, reach somebody else, invite them to be a part of this service so that their lives can be changed. Do you know somebody who's struggling? you know someone who is battling addiction, depression, anxiety? Invite them. Get them on this stream this morning because today is the day that breakthrough takes forth in their lives. Hey, God's about to do something extraordinary. We're getting ready to go into the countdown here at the chapel. Let's get ready to worship God. It's going to be an amazing time. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Chapel Jonesboro Online. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here.
again.
morning. But we have to keep our trust in him, knowing that he knows what is best. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battle's won. For you have never failed me. You are faithful, God. We trust you, Lord. Your faithfulness. I still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. You never failed me, Lord. I trust you. Your praise again. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise.
for just a brief moment. We want to welcome everybody to the Chapel Jonesboro this morning. If this is your first time here, wave your hand. If it's your first time in a long time, wave your hand. We welcome you back. If you're watching online and it's your first time watching with us online, get in the comment section and type in first time. Our connection team wants to welcome you here as a part of the Chapel family. We believe that once you've watched once, you're going to watch again. So we're super excited that you're here with us this morning. Who is excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. That same excitement should be the same excitement we have about sowing and our giving this morning in this place. I want to remind us of all the ways that we can give before we get into the giving part. If you're watching online, you can give via Cash App. That's money sign the Chapel Jonesboro. Again, money sign the Chapel Jonesboro on Cash App. Or if you're not tech savvy, we've got something for you as well. You can give by mailing your tithes and offerings here to the church at 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia. If you're in-house, you can give via Cash App. A lot of people choose to do that. Or you can give in just a brief moment when our ushers come to you with these buckets. Or if you would like to give using a debit or credit card, at the end of service, one of our Connections team members will be at the doors with the giving kiosk. Like I say every week, there's no reason not to give into God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. As you stand up on your feet in this place this morning, I want to read you a verse of Scripture. And it's a very encouraging Scripture from Psalms 144. And it says this, Blessed be God. My mountain, who trains me to fight fair and well. He's the bedrock on which I stand, the castle in which I live, my rescuing night, the high crag where I run for dear life while he lays my enemies low. This scripture, when I read it this morning, blessed to me because it, what, what it reminded me is because I choose to believe in God, because I choose to serve God, 
because I choose to put action to my belief and sow and plant into God's kingdom. Because I choose to read my word and spend time in fellowship with God, that scripture applies to my life. It said he is our mountain. How many people need God to be the mountain of your life? It says he puts my enemies even lower. How many people are tired of dealing with the crap of this world? Can I tell you, you don't have to worry about it if your God is your mountain because your enemies are low. We're able to say that because of our faithfulness. Because of our faithfulness. So this morning, think about that as you give. Be encouraged. I'm able to give this morning because my God is my mountain. And he's placed my enemies low beneath me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for what you've done in this place this morning. We ask, Lord, as we give into your kingdom today, Lord, that you will release blessings over our life. We pray blessings over every giver, every sower, every tithe payer, anybody who's going to plant a seed into your kingdom this morning, Lord. Remind them, Lord, that you are the God. You are their mountain. And anything that comes against them is always lower. In the name of Jesus, amen. Open the grave, I'm coming 
in the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to come out. Declare it again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live. Going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. that's held you bound begin to shake a little loose in this place this morning can you see addictions begin to shake free in this place this morning can you see anxiety begin to loose itself in this place this morning God said kneel God said kneel God said kneel This is what he said. Live, live, live. Drop to the word of the Lord. Live, live, drop on to the word of the Lord. Live, live, drop on to the word of the Lord. Live, live, drop on to the word of the Lord. Drop on to the word of the Lord. Little, little, drop on to the word of the Lord. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise making dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live. Come on, do it again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. Yes, Lord. Come on, one more time. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Yes, somebody pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you a question in this house this morning. Thank you, God. It's a simple question. Are you going to live? 
Yes. Are you going to live? Thank you, Lord. Come on, say it again. Are you going to live? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. In that valley that day, in that valley that day, those bones were laid all around that valley. No life in those bones at all. Nothing, nothing to sustain them. Nothing to bring them up. Nothing inside of those bones were left that could bring life to those bones. But in that valley, in that valley, in the middle of that valley was the presence of the Lord. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is life. Somebody here this morning, yeah. you're in the presence of the Lord. There's life in this house this morning. There's life in some of your bones this morning. There's life today in your situation. You're saying, oh, I don't see it. I don't see it, PD. I don't, oh, come on, I don't feel it. I don't feel life. But God is saying, look around you just a minute. He's saying, all oh, you see is the dead that's around you. All you see is what remains around you. He said, but in the middle of those remains, in the middle of what you see, there is resurrection power this morning. Resurrecting power this morning. There is My reviving God is power this morning. To Hallelujah. And deliver. Come on, sing it. And restore anything that he wants to just as the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha was there's anything that he can do just as the stone that was thrown at the tomb in the garden what happens when God says to I feel it moving Do you hear it? Do you hear it in this place this morning? Homes that are online with us, with us this morning. Do you hear that sound in your house today? Do you hear that sound of a mighty rushing wind? That sound that says when I pass by, that that is dead will rise up again. That sound that says when I begin to move, your circumstances begin to move. That sound that says you may have given up, but I have gotten you up. Come on, somebody give him praise in this place this morning. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you this morning, God. Lord, your atmosphere, you have set it for us, God. You have allowed us. You've allowed us to enter in to your atmosphere today. And God, I believe that through the entering in, that there is understanding, that there are things, there is enlightenment in front of us today. That there is a word that you have birthed into our spirits today. And God, as you have birthed that word, there is always an opponent against that word. There's always an attack that tries to come against your word. And God, I speak to that attack this morning. I speak to that distraction. I speak to that agenda, that a personal agenda that has been set forth this morning. God, I speak to the flesh this morning. That the flesh lay itself down. And God, I speak to the spirit man this morning. That that's inside of us, God, be stirred today. Be stirred to a point of boiling over, God. And God, I thank you for your people today. I thank you for your word today. But most of all, God, I thank you for Jesus today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Look around you. Tell somebody you better get ready because it's about to get live in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's liberty in this house this morning. 
There's freedom in this house this morning. Oh, go ahead, release yourself in this place today. You're only shackled by what you allow yourself to be shackled with. You're only tied up by what you've allowed to wrap itself around you. You're only bound to that that has bonded itself to you. Yes, Father. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. I speak into homes today that are viewing us right now. That addiction has to go. That those chains that have come to you again has to go. I speak in this building today. Into lives today that are suffering, that are weak. That there is strength today coming into your body. I speak to minds today that have been entangled and entrapped by things that the flesh wants. But today the, the spirit is overcoming your flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, the Lord, I have searched your soul. I have searched the innermost part of your being. I have looked inside of you. I have seen your desires. I've seen the things that you have done that has overridden my will in your life. I've seen your actions. And today, today I shall not chastise you. Today I shall separate you. Today I shall pull you from where you're at to where I've called you to be. Today is a day of renewal. Today is a day of enlightenment. Today is a day that I have set aside. You may have chose to come hear my word, but I have already predestined this day into your life, saith the Lord, this day into your life. Oh, his presence is so thick in this house this morning. I want to take you right where you're at. Don't move from where you're at. If you're still in the presence of the Lord, I want you to go into Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Verse 31 through 34. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 34. I was praying this week, and this is what the Lord spoke to me that I was to give for this time and this hour. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you, that he may sift you as sweet. But I have prayed for you, that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me. You will deny three times that you know me. You will deny, Lord, this day. You will deny, Peter, that you know me. My title today is Under Construction under construction and as I begin to read this scripture you may notice that Pastor Bobby is up here this morning and you you may see that he has a sifter in his hand you may see that he is sifting flour this morning he is in a preparation he's, he's getting ready to make some biscuits you see that as you look at this sifter and you begin to look at this flower come out of this sifter and you begin to look at that scripture again, uh, uh, Jesus says to Simon, he says, Simon, he says, Satan has asked for you. Oh, come on. I don't think you got what I just said. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as Wheat. You see, uh, the process this morning of sifting this wheat is removing the, the, the good from the bad. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? And what he was saying to Simon is, is that uh, there's some...
going to use it way, but there's some things that the guy that Peter, Simon Peter, has to go through. He's in a mess. Is there anybody in a mess? This You're in a mess. Stumbled and you fell to a place that you really don't fit in anymore. And the Lord said, he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan, and this is King James, had desired to have you. He wants you that he might sift you as wheat. He says he wants to demolish you. He wants to tear you apart. He wants to sift you as wheat. But Jesus begins to say, but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Oh, God is good this morning, isn't he, church? He is good this morning. You see, I, I want you to just put my scripture back up there again for me, if you would, please. Because I need you to catch this full text as they place it up on the screen. I need you to see the writing of the text because Jesus, he says, Simon, Simon, he said, behold, Satan, indeed, in other words, I own you, but he wants to get to you. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. You see, he desired to have you, Simon. You see, only twice in the Bible does God have a conversation regarding someone's life. Only twice in the Bible does he have a conversation with Satan regarding someone's life. Oh, you may say, well, what about when, when uh, uh, Satan was talking to Jesus? You see, that's a different story. But what I'm telling you, to, uh, let's go back to Job. What does he say? Uh, he, uh, Satan says, uh, let me get a hold of it. But, but if you go back a little further, you remember that Jesus says, consider my servant Job. <laughs> Oh, don't think he's not thinking about you this morning. I'm not talking about Jesus. Don't think that he's not wanting to test you this morning. Don't think that he's not wanting to sift you this morning. Don't think that he doesn't have a, a plan that he would like to pull you into. You see, because that's the way that he's designed. He's designed to separate you from the Jeremiah 29 and 11 to the Satan. Oh, come on. You need to hear me this morning. Don't think you don't want to sift you. But you see, <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a bad thing. You say it's a bad thing to, to sift me as wheat. But when you sift wheat, you separate the chaff from the wheat. It, it's a messy process as you look at this table up here this morning. It, it's a messy situation. His hands are messy. The table has flour all over it. Uh, his apron has some debris from, from where he's preparing the biscuit on him. It's gotten all over the place. Are there things in your life this morning that have gotten all over the place? I'm preaching to somebody this morning. You're very quiet on me. But is there some stuff in your life that has gotten all over the place? And you feel like like everything is falling apart. Hmm. Any of you guys ever heard of a cat head biscuit? Come on, I got some country people here this morning. It's not like you get out of the Pillsbury can. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? It's not processed, it's compressed. And you see, that cat head biscuit rises up and got lumps and knots and all that. I wish I had some bacon and eggs to go with some of these bacon, this biscuit up here. Anybody hungry? <laughs> but it's a messy process. And as Pastor Bobby is uh, preparing these biscuits in, in a little bit, you see that something else is going to take place. He's going to take the, this flour and all of these different ingredients and these biscuits that he's laid out here. He's going to take these biscuits. Let me have that thing just a minute if you will. He's going to take this that looks like, oh well I wouldn't eat that. Oh, You'll see in just a little bit. Uh, but he's going to take uh, what you see here and, and it's going to be transformed into something that it can nourish you. You see, some of us are walking around and you're still in the sifting process. You're still in the process that God, you're under construction. Come on, somebody this morning, say, look at somebody and say, I'm under construction this morning. I don't understand while I got some knots. Oh, come on. We need a spiritual spanks on us. Do you hear me this morning? Hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, it's in the air. Can you feel it, church? The atmosphere is set in this place. It was already being uh, cooked in the furnace next door today. It was already being prepared. It's almost biscuit time. Look at somebody and say it's almost biscuit time. Oh, come on. I got you now. I got you now. It's almost biscuit time. Could it be Satan? I mean, to be treated like wheat is not a bad thing because Jesus identifies himself as wheat. In John chapter 12 and 24, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and it dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He said, except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abide alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. So you see, it's not a bad thing to be identified with wheat. God could be using Satan to demolish what has been torn down so he can resurrect what he promised to happen in your life. You're thinking things are falling apart, but I've come by to tell you this morning what you think is falling apart. God is putting something else together in your life this morning. Your life is just, oh, somebody, can I get a witness this morning? Your life is just under construction today you see if Jesus was going to pray why didn't he pray to stop the sifting for Simon you could have stopped this mess Jesus how many times have we said that you could have stopped me from having my heart ripped out you could have stopped me from doing what I did oh come on your free will gets you into a lot of stuff <laughs> Oh, come on. You, you know, you hear it, you heard it said it takes two to tango. Do you understand what I'm saying? It take, Oh, come on, help me, Lord, this morning. It, it, it takes two people to make a baby. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? You could have stopped me, Lord. You could have stopped me. You see, almost every time there's a catastrophe in this country, without fail, somebody will come to me and they'll say, how could God allow this to happen? How could God allow this to happen? Uh, surely God must be asleep at the wheel to allow such a travesty to go on. And, and any time you look at your life like a piece of the puzzle and, and you want to explain the picture by the piece, you're going to fail. Did you hear what I'm saying? A lot of people look at the piece of the puzzle and try to explain our life by the piece. But God says until you are willing to look at the whole puzzle, all you're seeing is a piece. You see, some of you are looking at the piece and not looking at the finished puzzle. Oh. Oh. When you take that piece and you put it with all the other pieces, then you begin to understand why it was necessary. To have a funny looking thing happen in your life to get to where you are, God is trying to take you to a place this morning. Oh, I'm t oh have you ever had one of those good old messy blessings? Uh, did, did that not get messy up there this morning? One of those messy blessings. Come on. Uh, it's kind of like uh, at the house. Uh, uh, I love to cook, but I don't love to clean up. And Pastor Saber will say to me, well, are you not going to clean your mess up in here? Come on. You see, a lot of us want the meal, but we don't want the mess. You, you want the blessing, but you don't want the burden in the middle of the blessing you want it to be easy but God says it's got to get messy in order to come the way that it's coming is there anybody here this morning you feel like all you have been into has been in the middle of the mess you see, God was saying, I pray for you not that the sifting would not happen. He said, I, I didn't pray for you that he, that he won't have access to you, Satan. I didn't pray that you wouldn't be hurt. I didn't pray that you wouldn't cry. I didn't pray that you wouldn't get upset. I didn't even pray that you wouldn't cuss. Because, you know, Peter had a little problem. He had a little problem. You see, as... If you don't catch nothing, I need you to catch this. As much as God cares about your morality, he didn't pray for his morality. He prayed for his mentality. When we align our mentality, then we will align our morality also.
Because when your mindset is off, your life set is off. Oh, come on. But <laughs> what does it say? It said, he that his mind is on me. <laughs> Woo! You ain't got no peace because your mind really ain't on him. Hmm. He said, I pray that your faith fail not. He said, I, I didn't even pray that you wouldn't fail. I prayed that your faith, Peter, would not fail. In fact, if you read on down in the verse, he goes on to prophesy before the cock crows, you're going to fail three times. He said, before the rooster can even begin to crow out, before you get up in the morning, before lunchtime ever comes, before evening ever comes. You see, because anybody ever had a rooster? That's the best clock in the country you can ever have until you get hungry. Somebody got to kill the clock. He said before he can even make a sound, Peter, you're going to deny me. He said, but I'm not praying that you won't fail. I'm not praying that you won't get messy. I'm not praying that you won't get upset. I'm not praying that that there won't be dust and sawdust. I'm not praying that there won't be bricks and mortar flying around. I'm not praying that there won't be debris all around your life. I'm not praying that you won't be shattered. I'm praying that your faith doesn't fail. You see, church, from a physical standpoint, the chapel has been under construction. Construction takes time. Some of you are under construction, but you're fighting with the time that it's taking to construct you. You're fighting with the sifting. Are you with me this morning? Y'all are quiet. Either you're getting this or you want to get out of here. But let me tell you something. If, if, if we're not going to believe God when all hell is breaking loose and the cranes are overhead and the dust is flying and the glass is shattering, if we're not going to stand flat-footed in the middle of the mess and say, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Oh, my God. The hymnist even said, he said, in God, he said, I will trust God wherever I may be, whether I'm on land or whether the raging sea. Oh, somebody this morning. I have had to download it when I began to look at it. I will trust God wherever I may be upon the land or on the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. He said, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless if the sifting don't feel good, regardless if I got some lumps in my biscuit, I'm still going to trust God. Regardless if I run into some problems, oh, you better get to praising him this morning. You better start saying, I trust him. I don't understand it. I can't figure it out. I can't add it up. I can't subtract it. But bless God, I know he's with me. Woo! Oh, under construction. Do you smell it? Can you smell it? I must have done something wrong because my bowl is empty. I, I must have done something. I, I, I thought I had enough to get me by. I thought I was going to get through it. I, I, I thought that, uh, oh, oh. God says, take a smell. God says, breathe it in a minute. Breathe it in a minute. Soak it in a minute. Oh, I smell some biscuits. I smell some biscuits. You smell some biscuits in this place. Come on. Oh, all of that sifting, all of that stirring, all of that, all of that process. It, it didn't feel good. 
Oh, you, you didn't see how bad of a mess. You didn't see how long it took me to clean up just to get through that process. You, you didn't see what I had to deal with under that process. You see, I, I, I'm trying to get you to see the value of trusting God in messy places this morning. To just believe that when everything is failing, glass is shattering, concrete is busting, steel is bent, marriage is distorted, kids are acting crazy. You can't find your, you, you, you can't find your parents. You don't know who your daddy is. You you lost your job. You're evicted from your apartment. Somebody is going through a crisis this morning, almost to the point of an emotional meltdown. And then to stand in the middle of it and say, Lord, I trust you that all things are going to work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Oh, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you that the thing that I was being sifted from is manifested into the thing that I'm being shifted to. I trust you, God, that you have all the ingredients for what I need today. God, I trust you. Oh, my mouth is water. I trust you. God, that you're going to sustain me when I can't take care of myself. I trust you, God. Even though my husband or my wife are acting a fool, I trust you, God. Even though my job is on shaky ground, I trust you, God. Because during the, in the middle of the shaking, in the middle of the acting, in the middle of all the defiance that's been going on around me, I now understand, God, that the devil came to you and he wanted to take my life. Let me tell you something. The devil has to ask God for permission to even put his finger on you. Or do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? He can't touch you unless he's came to Jesus and asked for permission to trust you. And then at that point, Jesus said, go ahead, Satan. Go ahead and go to him because I've already made him a biscuit. Sin. Sin. Ought to be a sin to have something that good. <laughs> I'm just going to set it right here because I'm going to come back to it. Stay right there. I don't need after nobody, so I'm going to have to eat that again in a minute. He has to ask God for permission to get in your mess. Oh, come on. You see, you're going through a crisis, emotional meltdown. But you need to remember what I said. All things. All things. Do you hear me this morning? I dare somebody to look at somebody and say, I'm under construction. <laughs> say it again. I had to get this biscuit down or you'll be under a biscuit in a minute. <laughs> you see... God told me to tell you, you just got some bricks out of place. He told me to tell you that some windows have been shattered. He told me to tell you that some of your hearts have been broken. Some of your minds have been confused. Some of you have slept for days. Uh, but, but uh, you know, there's an old song we used to sing in the church house. Uh, uh, some of you feel like the roof is coming in on you. Some of you feel like you can't even get the door open anymore because the house has settled and the frame is pushed to a spot that you really got to jerk on it to get it open. But let me tell you something. There's an old song that says, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? I dare you to look at somebody and say my house is under construction I'm dealing with some things I'm battling some things but bless God I got a feeling all oh, the Holy Ghost is in this house this morning I got a feeling that everything is going to be alright not just a little bit of it but everything is going to be alright now you know no one escapes a mess rich folk they don't escape a mess 
So stop being a hater. Poor folks don't escape a mess. It may be a different kind of mess, but it's still a mess. White folks don't escape a mess. Black folks don't escape a mess. Brown folks don't escape a mess. Young folks don't escape a mess. Lord knows we all got a mess. Oh, no one is exempt from problems. Hmm. Could it just be that you're only being sifted? Could it just be that you feel like those lumps that were in the sifter? Could it just be that you feel like you're alone and you have no one, no one to be with you? Huh. Oh, I dare somebody to praise him in this place this morning. Oh, come on. There's somebody beside you a lot older than you are, and they're clapping better than you are. Do you hear? If they got enough strength to do it, you sure enough got enough strength to do it. Oh, you got to understand that the details of what happened to you might be different from the details of what happened to me, but it still tore my house down. It still broke out my windows. It still twisted the steel girders. Oh, oh, come on. I had to get permission for this next line before we got here. You know, there's a lot of buildings being torn down right now. There's a lot of stuff being demolished right now. You feel like your life is being imploded. You feel like at any moment it's all crashing down on top of you. You see, you, you need to understand the details of what happened to the person beside you are no different than the details of what happened to you as well. <laughs> you see, uh, oh, somebody said, well, uh, Jesus said, he says, when thou art converted, he's talking to Peter, when thou art, have, are converted, he said, you haven't been cheated, so stop feeling sorry for yourself. Everybody went through something, and it doesn't matter whether you leave Sally to get Mary, you leave old Mary, you see, old Mary's crazy too. Whether you drop Fred to go for Bill, Bill is just another kind of sifting. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? Oh, come on. I'm going to trade him for him. Hmm. Bill looks better than Fred. But Fred got more money than Bill. Hmm. But Fred beat his last wife. Fred don't live right at all. Huh. Come on. Huh. Oh, what do they say? They say, I wouldn't give a dime for the gunpowder it'd take to blow him away. <laughs> Y'all, you really getting to go back to my roots this morning, ain't you? But you see, you're wanting to trade one thing that's under construction for another thing that God's trying to demolish. You're wanting to trade one thing for construction for something that God is trying to tear completely down to build what you should have in your life. <laughs> All of a sudden, you stop working for people. You start working for yourself because you say, I'm tired of working for, I've been there. I'm tired of working for other people. I'm going to work for myself. I think it'll be easier. Let me tell you, it's not easier. It's just another kind of crazy. Just another kind. I'm trying to get you to understand you didn't miss anything. You're running and dealing with your mess because at least you know what kind of mess this is. You understand this mess. You had years to look at this mess, and you can't get a strategy for your mess. I can't fix what I've got going on. It's when you ask God to get a strategy for somebody else's mess did you hear what I said he says Peter he says Peter he says uh, when you're converted strengthen your brother huh. because if you listen to the scripture real good uh, it, this this is what transpired he said Peter you're going to deny me did he not say that did I did I not read that this morning he said before the rooster can crow three times you're going to deny me he said in other words let me just give it to you. Peter, you're going to backslide a little bit. 
Peter, you're not going to live the way you living right now. You're going to go back and say, I never knew Jesus, and this is who I am. He said, but Peter, when you get right, come on. <laughs> you see, you're missing the point. You're wanting to get somebody else right, but you're not wanting to get yourself right. You're wanting to sift somebody else, uh, uh, but you're not wanting to, oh, come on, to sift yourself this morning. You want to check their mail and talk about their bills, but you're not wanting to open up your box and handle your own bills. Mm. <laughs> he said, help your brother. Help him get out of bed, Peter. Understand why he's moving so slow. Understanding why he screamed when you touched him in that spot. Understand why he can't uh, keep his food down. Uh, you much, you, 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 uh, he said, uh, uh, you'll be a much better physician when you have been patient. Mm. And then finally God says, he says, I will give to you if I can get it through you. We know this about finances in the church, don't we? We know that we understand that finance is the currency that flows. And any time you break the flow, you lose the power. Whether you're talking about a, a, the global economy, a national economy, a household economy, it, it survives through movement. And you see, stagnation stops the flow and ultimately is a deterrent of any organization. So we, we, we know about finances, but do we know about mercy? That God will give it to you if he can get it through you. The Bible, what does it say? It says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Oh, God says, if I can get it through you, I will give it to you. If I can get you to help somebody else, if I can get you to love somebody else, God says, the more you give it away, the more that I'm going to give to you. Hmm. Oh, oh, I want to ask you something this morning. Huh. Oh, let me help you. I want to give somebody a biscuit in this place this morning. I want to give somebody a biscuit in this place this morning. <laughs> Do you mind if I handle your biscuit? <laughs> you see, there's a restaurant in Foley, Alabama. that's called Lambert's. And at Lambert's, It's the house of the throw rolls. It's the house. <laughs> oh, you see, did you catch that this morning? Y'all really thought I could play ball, didn't you? You see, you weren't looking for what God was trying to throw to you. You weren't open. You weren't open for what God was trying. You looked at how she was blessed, and she caught what God was trying to give her. But God says, I'm going to bring your blessing in another way that you've never seen it before. You may be banking on how they, oh, I feel God in this house this morning. You may be banking, oh, somebody here this morning. Somebody here this morning. Oh, come on. Come on, you're thinking, well, he's throwing stuff at me. No, you're dodging what God is trying to do for you today. You're dodging what God has for you today. You're dodging everything he's trying to pour out to you. You're dodging it. You're saying, no, I don't want it that way. I don't want my blessing to be messy. I don't want a messy blessing. I wanted a sophisticated blessing. I want an easy blessing. How them biscuits taste. They sharing that one on that aisle out there like five rats in the alley. <sighs> You want your blessing. You want your blessing, but you want it the way you want it. And I'm going to give you a good little step. You want to 
You want to have your cake and eat it too. In this case, your biscuit and eat it too. <sighs> but what does he say? <sighs> oh, I got one biscuit left. This is going to be the hard part right here. This is going to be the real hard part right here. Jonathan, I'm going to give you another chance. Stand up for me, okay? I need, I need you to catch this biscuit. This is very important, Jonathan. This is going to... Okay, ho, ho, stand up, stand up. Don't sit down. I need you to stand up. Okay, now here it is. Don't tell... You just look at that biscuit. Because the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure... Shake, oh, press down. Do you hear me? Press down, shaking together and running over. Let me tell you something. Here's what's going to hurt you, Jonathan. I want you to give that biscuit to Alex. Because what did he say? He said, give. Woo, do I got a witness in this house this morning. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down. Somebody better. You see, that's the problem. See, you, you ain't pressing down what he's giving to you. Whoa, I don't think you got me this morning. Oh, because here it is. When you break the flow, you start focusing on you. You lose the ability to receive the very thing uh, you're after because in order to receive it, you got to give it away. And anything you give away will come back to you. I'm sorry, Jonathan. He's probably didn't eat that biscuit. <sighs> you want attention, you got to give attention. You want friends, you got to be friendly. You want to smile, look at somebody and smile. You old fake smilers. You got to give a smile. Don't you know it's hard not to smile at somebody that's smiling at you? It's hard. What are you smiling about? Huh. It can be good or it could be bad because some of you may be smiling because you just did something bad and think you got away with it. Hmm. Huh. Hard to smile. <laughs> Here it comes. It's hard to smile with crumbs on your cheek. Did you eat my biscuit? No. Uh, uh, no. What's that on your cheek? That's my biscuit you ate. You see, that's kind of how it is. Uh, some of us want to live off of others' blessings. Some of you, uh, come on. What's the Bible tell you? I got to get on out of this place, ain't it? What's it tell you about coveting something that your neighbor's got? Uh -huh. Oh, oh, it's hard not to smile at somebody that's smiling back at you. They make you smile. Uh, you don't even feel like smiling, but you give them a quick one, even if you got to fake it. Hey, y'all seen some of y'all. I look at some of y'all, I say, how are you this morning? They're like, you about as fake as a $4 bill. Oh, 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 come on, you got to, even if you got to just flash something out there real quick. It's hard to be in the presence of somebody who is giving something and not reciprocate it at the same time. <laughs> well, what's in it for me? That's the society we live in now. You give me this, I'll give you that. that that's our problem now. Oh, we got our country, and uh, we, we're going to help our country. We're going to roll out this stimulus plan, but they're giving three-quarters of the money to another country. But yet all of y'all and us, I'm not exempt, want to support them. They're giving your biscuit away, and you get nothing. Nothing. But really, honestly, you're getting the mess that it took. To make the biscuit. Do you hear me this morning? Oh, every mess has a message. It has it. 
Oh, so you break the flow. You, 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 when you walk away, you broke the flow. When you, you get involved in ministry, you get ministered to. When you give mercy, you get mercy. When you give love, you get love. So, I, I wish somebody could hear me. You, you don't know. Uh, oh, come on. Somebody said, well, I gave John love. I was good to old John. You don't know what I'm going through with John. You might uh, not get back. From where you gave it, but you will always get it back from somewhere. I was good to them. They were never good to me. But there was somebody that came along that will be even better to you than you were to them. If you're willing, to, oh, come on this morning. Am I helping anybody today? You see, it, it occurs to me that our problem is a loss of a flow. It, it would be like... Uh, Having a pain in your leg. Oh, I don't know why I've got this going on. I, I get up every morning. You go to the doctor, and the first thing the doctor says is, I want to give you an MRI. You see, the doctor wasn't concerned about your discomfort or your pain. The doctor was concerned about your circulation. Because he knew that the leg would get better if the blood was flowing in the leg. That the body gets in trouble when the flow is broken. Hmm. And that is same spiritually as well. They won't miss me Sunday. That may be the case. But are you pulling yourself out of the flow? Because the Bible says assemble yourself together. That doesn't, that doesn't mean you get yourself together at home and I'm good to go. Let me tell you something. I can't, I can't tell you the times that people say, well, we're just having church at home. Yeah, we, we just having church at home. Eh? The four of us, you ought to hear me sing, PD. Your old family don't even want to hear you sing. Why am I going to want to hear you sing? But yeah, you say you're having church at home, but then you're not living like a person that's having church at all. Because you've created your own religion. Oh. If you're the boss of your own church, then you, <laughs> you get, oh, come on. Oh. You see, the marriage gets in trouble when the flow is broken. The family gets in trouble when the flow is broken. When you don't give what you got and it stops with you, you stop the circulation and there's going to be some swelling somewhere. You see, it's like getting a blood clot in your body. When that blood clot gets in your body, it stops the circulation to that area of your body. And then there's a swelling and a discomfort that comes along. Is there anybody this morning, you're in, some, you're, you're in a discomfort situation now. You're saying, uh, I'll not be dealing with this. But you need to ask yourself the question, at what point did I get out of the flow? Because if we're just truly honest with ourselves, then we will be honest enough to deal with the point. <sighs> You see, there's going to be pain somewhere. There's going to be a, a misfigurement somewhere because uh, you got it, but you didn't give it. He said, Peter, he said, when thou art converted from being patient to being physician, keep the flow. You see, because <laughs> he says, if you will just imitate what you have received, you will continue to circulate your life. Oh, come on. It's fact. Givers get blessed. Oh, you didn't hear me. Givers gets blessed. Givers gets blessed. It's, it's almost a shame, though, that most church pastors only talk about giving in terms of money because sometimes we get the bigger principle that flows outside of money. It's not just about money that givers get blessed. It's when you go to somebody and you say a kind word to that person. Givers give love. Givers give attention. Givers give affection. Givers give talent. Givers give resources. Givers give finances. I don't care what it is. If you're stingy and into these areas of your life, you break the flow. And you can't receive when you break the flow. And could it be that the devil, the devil just lets certain things happen to you to encourage you to break the flow? Oh. Oh. If I could just give you one week of the text messages that me and Pastor Saber receive. Of the different things that we see in people that have just broken the flow. <laughs> and they can't figure it out. Oh, you're like, I ain't texted you, PD. Everybody looking at their cell phones. 
It wasn't me, was it? No, 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 no. I'm not airing your business out. I'm telling you that if you get in his business, you won't have to tell your business. You won't have to tell anything about you. You see, here's the truth. If you're blood washed, did you hear me? I'm going to tell you the truth again. Here's the truth. If you're blood bought, blood washed, born again, spirit filled Christian, the enemy can't curse you because you don't belong to him and he cannot curse another man's property. Do you hear what I'm telling you? At the beginning of the text today, I said that Satan had to go to Jesus and have a conversation about Peter. He had to get permission to bring that into Peter's life. He, oh, dude, you don't hear me, do you? You think Peter just made the decision on his own well they're about to kill Jesus I got to get out of this thing no 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 that little voice uh, was given permission to come to him and speak to him and tell him you need to deny him not once not twice but three times you need to deny the very existence that you know him but you see the thing you haven't grasped as Jesus knew that Peter was under construction Because he even said it. He said, when you get right. When you get right. In other words, when you stop listening to him and you come back to listening to me, you see, the only hope he has to stop you is to get you to make a decision that curses yourself. You see, since he don't have power over you, the only thing he can hope to do is break the flow in your life. Because if he breaks the flow in your life, you'll begin to get problems in your areas. Not because the enemy did not uh, did it, but because you broke the flow. And Jesus says, when you're converted, Peter, don't break the flow. Oh, he says, if I bless you, bless somebody else. If I give to you, give back to me. If I sow into you, sow it back into me. It's not that I need what you've got. That's what he's telling somebody this morning. He says that you need to give me what you got because every time you give me what you've got, you get an increase and your capacity in your life begins to increase and you have life and life more abundantly. You see, if you'll stand to your feet this morning, could it just be That your greatest asset is your greatest conflict? Your greatest asset, is it your greatest conflict? Could it be that what you value, God doesn't value at all? Could that be the case? (sighs) Oh, I can't speak, Pastor. My mouth is dry from that biscuit. Oh, you know... I spoke on leftovers and how I didn't like leftovers. I didn't say I wouldn't eat them. I just said I really don't enjoy them because they're not as good the second time as they are the first time. That was the clarification that I made. But I'm not too good to eat leftovers. But some of us have classified ourselves in such a place. In other words, you have valued yourself, and we teach that here. We teach that that you're you're fearfully and wonderfully made, ladies. We teach you to understand your value, but then you see some of us hmm, over appraise our value. <laughs> and if you'd be real to yourself this morning and understand that you're a child of God, that you're his property. You see, the reason some of you aren't getting any more is because you've ran out of capacity. (laughs) You you need to give something away. Look at somebody say, you need to give something away. You need to give it away. The very thing that you want, you need to give it away. The very thing that you need, you need to give it away. Heads are bowed this morning. If you're viewing with us online today. I want to encourage you right now as this church is full of believers. Your home is full of believers as well. You are connected to us today. You are a part of us today. And in your homes today, you want to be free from something. 
but you're not willing to let that something go to be free. Someone here today, you want to be free from what you're at. The Bible says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He said, if I have set you free, then not only have I set you free, but I have titled it. I have documented that you are free. Your decision to be tied to what you're tied to is your own decision. Peter, you're going to make the wrong decision. You're not only going to do it once, Peter, but you're going to do it three times. But guess what? I'm still going to be there for you. I'm still going to be there for you. Peter, I'm going to still let you come to the table and eat biscuits and gravy with me. Mm. You're here this morning, you're viewing online, and you're saying, I don't know how. I don't understand how I'm going to get from where I am to where I need to be. And this is why the Lord had me to print this hymn off this morning. the reframe I'm not I'm not musically inclined I want to say it this way the next verse says I trust in God I know he cares for me on the mountain bleak or on the stormy sea though the billows roll he keeps my soul my heavenly father watches over me you going through a storm this morning is your focus on the biscuit is your focus on the construction that's going on in your life? All you see is the devastation, but you don't see the deliverer in the middle of the devastation. You don't see the restore. You don't see the rebuilder. You don't see the reviver in the middle of the situation that you're. You only see the temporary promise. The temporary promise is all you see. Let me tell you about a temporary promise this morning. When you get that temporary promise, you're forever in your life trying to get more of the temporary. Oh, I wish I had another one of those biscuits, PD. I wish I had another one. Of, I, I just, I wish Pastor Bobby had made 30 of those biscuits because I would eat all 30 of them. You get greedy in the temporary. You get greedy in the temporary and you say, you know, uh, because the next thing you know, you're seeing the temporary is permanent. But you're not seeing it for what it is. And while your heads are bowed this morning, your eyes are closed, I want to ask you right now, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the temporary? Or are you looking at the permanent? Are you looking at what is right now instead of what could be or what God has already set for you? Have you been one of those that You've not been reciprocative. That is, you have not reciprocated. You have not given that that you've been given back in return. You've, done, you've not blessed someone else even though yet you've been blessed. You, you've not been kind to someone that's been kind to you. You've kept it all for yourself. There's a term that I call for that, that a person that keeps it all to their self. They're a spiritual hoarder. it all and God says no 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 I, I have it all for you but you need to get rid of this stuff God's telling somebody this morning while your heads are bowed my prayer warriors if you'd step down here to these altars please you guys y'all come on down here I have people down here this morning that I know that have prayed up they have spent time with the Lord God's saying to somebody right now He's saying, stop focusing on all the mess that's around you. Stop focusing on everything that pulled you to a spot that you don't see the product that's coming from the mess. He's telling somebody this morning it's not too late to come back. It's not too late to surrender. He said, if you want what I have for your life, then you need to give me what you have today you need to surrender it unto me you need to lay it down at this altar today you know 
I did a study on why people enjoy food. Yesterday, our week has been upside down with everything that's going on. But middle in the, in the middle of the upside down, there's been a right side up God. I said that to say someone needs to hear that. But I began to look as I was working on this message because God just slapped me in the back with this yesterday. So I looked into food and I looked at the why people can be pretty much addicted to a certain type of food. Why you, it's like the person that all they order is hamburgers. All they order is chicken fingers. But once you get that steak, it's different, isn't it? Because that steak doesn't taste like that chicken finger any longer. You've acquired a different taste. But the study showed that a person that goes to the same food each time is because they have settled for the same. They have settled for, they know that it's easy, it's convenient to go to McDonald's, order a number one because that's a Big Mac meal. It's bad when you know the menu. Number 10, chicken nuggets. You know the meal. You, you know what you're going to get. You're already prepared for what you're going to get. You see, that's how some of us are living our lives before Christ. Well, I know what's going to happen because that's what happened last time. But God says, no, I, I need you today. I'm, I'm sifting you. I have something greater than that number one that you've been ordering at McDonald's. You want to be free? you got to change what you're coming to. These altars are open this morning, right now. I'll meet you down here and pray for you, but I feel like we have an adequate staff here this morning that'll bind and believe with you if you'll step out from where you're at. And as I pray, you can begin to come. Father, I thank you this morning. God, I thank you how you can use something illustrated. And God, you can use that and it can open up our spirits. And God, I thank you this morning that we're open right now. God, today in your word, you said... When our mentality is right, our morality is right. And God, could it just be that what's wrong with society today is that the wrong mindset is in place. And when the wrong mindset comes in place, the wrong life follows the mind. That is the morality of it. That is doing what is right falls out of the way. And Lord, as your people are here this morning, God, I speak over your people today. I speak over this church. I speak over homes today. I speak over people today that are hurting and they've fallen back to stuff that will, they feel comfortable with. That today there is a separation finally done, God. There's a separation that's finally done. And Lord, I speak that today. Now, God, as we're in this place this morning, We hope you had as just as good of a time in service today as we did. God really showed up and showed out. If you have been blessed by today's message, don't forget to give using the giving methods that we talked about earlier in service. And also share this with your friends. We love you and we hope you have a blessed day.